Hey, you all right down there? It either. There was a brand new tire this morning. What's the matter? Are you sure you're all right? Oh, I'm a little shaky, I guess. Come on, we can sit down over here. What am I? An orphan? Come on. Any man that drives as fast as you do ought to be run out of this country. Well, you tell me all about it sometime. Thanks for the lift, buddy. Oh. Say, I'm awfully sorry about all this. You're sorry? How about us? We can't stay here all night. Well, you won't have to. I said I'd get you to Carrington Hall, and I will. How? You gonna fly us there on a broom? Oh, get help. We passed a garage about two miles back. Now, you take it easy and don't worry about a thing. I'll be back in a flash with a tow car. Why, it's as simple as falling off a log. Huh. Comfortable? Well, don't go away now. Must have been his wife with him. Can you manage the bags? Yes, I think so. Oh, yeah. there. Here are mine. There. Now, okay. mind if I sit on your lap? Oh, well, really, my dear young oh, lady. We're awfully sorry to inconvenience you, but we had a blowout. Ah, oh, this is comfortable. Well, what are we waiting for? Oh, very well, lady. Drive on. Yes, sir. Would you mind telling me where you ladies are taking me? To the Carrington estate. Uh oh. Is there anything wrong with the Carrington place? Yes, ma'am. If there wasn't anybody living there, it'd be a haunted house. My, my, Cosmo's late. He's usually home by now. Oh, my, it's chilly, isn't it? Emily, remind me to send this coat back. It doesn't keep me warm at all. Mrs. Topper, you haven't got it on. Oh, oh, oh silly of me. My, it's strange how it's usually cold in the winter and warm in summer, isn't it? Oh, there's Cosmo now. <laughs> oh, look, someone's waving to us. It's a lady. It's worse than that, boss. It's Mrs. Topper. Emily, look. He's got a carload of women. And one of them, one of them sitting on his lap. Oh, my Emily. Are you sure this is the Carrington place? Yes, yeah, that's what they call it. Cheerful little eyeful, isn't it? Thanks for the lift, Mr. Topper. Don't mention it. Hurry up with those bags, Eddie. Yes, sir. I ain't wasting no time around here. I'd like to invite you in, but... Oh, no, thanks. Not very much. We've got to be getting home. We sure do. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. Good evening. Why don't you knock before you come out? I'm the butler, Miss Carrington. Oh, I'm not Miss Carrington. There she is. How do you do? Won't you please step in?
Kerrington? Yes. I'm Lily and the housekeeper. Oh, how do you do? This is my friend, Miss Richards. Howdy. Your father's waiting, miss. Thank you. Would you mind waiting here? This way, please. One moment, please. Miss Carrington? This is Dr. Jerry's, your father's physician. How do you do, Dr. Jerry's? I'd like a few words with you, Miss Carrington, before you see your father. Of course. I'll be as brief as possible. Your father's far from being a well man, Miss Carrington. Yes, I know. Seeing you for the first time may be something of a shock to him. I think I understand, Doctor. He's been looking forward to your arrival with great eagerness. I hope there'll never be any occasion for you to be separated from him again. Come with me, please. Your daughter. Anne. I... I don't know quite what to do or say. Nor do I, except to tell you, Anne, you're beautiful. You're the image of her mother when she was young. Perhaps you'd better sit down. Yes. I, I know you must think it very strange, seeing your own father for the first time on the eve of your 21st birthday. Well, naturally, I've wondered why you never sent for me. Your mother loved the Far East, and her last wish was that you be brought up in the land she loved so well. Oh, I've wanted to send for you many times, but I had to respect your mother's wishes. And, of course, my own health wouldn't permit me to visit you. I understand, Father. I hope we had a pleasant trip. Yes, we, we had a wonderful trip. We? Oh, I brought a friend along with me. An American girl named Gail Richards. Her father's the head of an exporting company in Shanghai. Richards, you say? Mm-hmm. Why, oh, I, I hope you don't mind my bringing her. Of course not. Besides, the house belongs to you now. No, father. To us. No, my dear. By well, the terms of your mother's will, everything belongs to you after tomorrow. What else do you do around here besides wine clock? Been here long? 20 years. 20 years. Mm -hmm. Looks like it might turn out to be a steady job, huh? <laughs> ah. Your mother wanted you to have these, and they're exactly as she wore them 20 years ago. Oh, Dad, they're, they're beautiful. <laughs> they'll look every bit as beautiful upon you as they did upon your mother. Dad, I, I never did know just how Mother died. Some sort of an accident, wasn't it? Yes, dear. A mine cave in. I met your mother in Singapore. After you were born, we decided to move to Sumatra, where I had an interest in a tungsten mine. My partner was a man named Walter Harburg. One day he was showing your mother through the mine, when suddenly there was an earthquake. The tunnel collapsed. You've talked enough, Mr. Carrington. I'm sorry to interrupt, but we mustn't tire your father. Oh, of course not. I hope you'll like your room, dear. Oh, I'm sure I will. Lillian will show you where it is. I, I'm supposed to conserve my strength. It's quite all right, Father. Good night, darling. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. 
Good night, Dr. Jarrett. Good night, Miss Carrington. Where's Miss Richards? Here I am, pal. That was rather a close call. Close? Six more inches and we'd all be singing Annie doesn't live here anymore. How could such a thing happen? Please, Mr. Carrington, you mustn't excite yourself. I think you'd better show the young ladies to their rooms. Yeah, pick us a couple without chandeliers, will you? This way, please. Chinese room will be yours, Miss Richards. Oh, you're a doll. Well, this is just dandy. I traveled 7,000 miles to get away from Chinamen, and here I am with everything but a bowl of rice. What's that sound? It's the waves, angry waves. Day after day, night after night, they beat with savage fury against the black rocks below. For 20 years, they've been calling, calling, calling to someone who never answers. Just like the pot of gold program. Will that be all, miss? No, I'm starved. You forgot we didn't have any dinner. Rama will bring you a tray. Oh, any little thing will do. Lobster, salad, and beer, but nothing heavy. Anything for you, Miss Carrington? No, thank you, Rama. I'm going to bed, Gail. I'm all in. I'm kind of baggy myself. <laughs> Good night, Miss Richards. Good night. I hope you rest in peace. Thank you. Isn't that what they write on tombstones? Oh, don't be silly. Go on to bed. Good night, darling. Your father had this room done especially for you. Lovely. Very sorry, miss, but we have no beer. I brought you some wine. Wine? Why, that champagne! Yes, miss. Oh, put it down, buddy. Will there be anything else, oh, miss? Oh, that's all, thank you. Champagne? Why well, hide it? <laughs> Anne? Yes? Is that you? Yes, it's me. Well, open up and let me in. <whistles> Gee, where's the glass slipper that goes with us? It is nice, isn't it? Oh, nice. It's heaven compared to that Chinese torture chamber I'm in. Gee, what a layout. Oh, this is for me. I've always wanted to sleep in one of these covered wagons. It's almost too nice to sleep in. Say, what do you have to do to get a bed like this? Rub a magic lamp or something? You really like this room, don't you? Ah, oh, this is right up my alley. Oh, to catch measles and have to stay in a bed like this. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to bed. For tonight, darling, this room is yours. Oh, no, you don't. I wouldn't dream of letting you do anything like that. But it's a deal. <laughs> anything to keep out of China. Good night, Cinderella. Good night, pal. And I do mean pal. <laughs> Say, uh, lock your door in case Lady Frankenstein walks in her sleep. Come in. Did you wish anything, Doctor? Are the young ladies comfortable? Quite. That will be all, then. I don't mind if I do. Oh. 
I know. It was never like this. I've told you repeatedly and incessantly, when I could get a word in edgewise, that the whole thing was no fault of mine. I think it's ridiculous for a man of your age to pursue young girls. What will the neighbors think? I didn't pursue them, Kara. They forced themselves on me. Don't be absurd. Imagine girls, pretty girls, forcing themselves on a paunchy middle-aged man. Well, I don't think I'm paunchy. Don't try to change the subject. At least you might have waved to me when you went by. I've explained that, darling. I couldn't. That girl was sitting on my lap. Oh, I know she was. I warn you, Cosmo, if ever you do a thing like this again, I'm going back to Mama. Can't 
Michelle, of course I don't intend to do a thing like that again. Besides, I... I couldn't very well have sat on her lap, could I? Cosmo, this is hardly the time for jokes. That's peculiar. I don't think it's so peculiar. After all, we've been married for 20 years, and I have a perfect right to be treated like a wife who... who has been married for 20 years. That's odd. It's not odd at all. Cosmo, do you realize what you're saying? Um, I beg your pardon, dear, what? Well, if that's all the attention you're going to give me, I may as well go to bed. Good night. Well, I might be a little overweight, but I'm certainly not paunchy. In fact, I'm in pretty good shape for the shape I'm in. After all, I'm a banker, not a glamour boy. your cold feet off my back. You don't need all the covers, do you? Here I am, Poppy. Remember me, the girl that sat on your lap? Oh, this is terrible. What's terrible? You're a ghost. You're dead. No kidding. Okay, you've got to get out of here. I've had enough trouble with your kind of people. What a strange I should be dead. I was young and healthy, and I felt swell when I went to bed. So why did I die? I don't know, but you can't stay here. You've got to go back to the Caddington house. Cosmo! There, you see? Cosmo! Quick, do something. Vanish. Well, all right, Toppy. Here I go. Oh, oh it's you, dear. <laughs> Cosmo, who on earth were you talking to? Nobody, dear. Um, nobody. Uh, I was just talking in my sleep, you know. Talking in your sleep? But that's such a waste of time. Besides, nobody can hear you. Oh, well, I'm not so sure about that. Cosmo, I, I'm sorry I was so mean. I know you'd tell me if there was anything between you and that girl. Let, let's forget all about her. Well, I'd like to, dear, but under the circumstances, I'm afraid I can't. Oh, well, of course. If that's the way you feel about it, I'll talk to you in the morning. When you're sober. Why don't you look where you're going? Why don't you be where you are? Now see what you've done. There's nothing compared to what I'm going to do if you don't come with me. Come with you? Where? Back to the Carrington house. I'm curious to know what happened to me. Go ahead. Oh, no. No, I couldn't go alone, I'm afraid. I don't like that house. It's spooky. I won't go. All right, if that's the way you feel about it. Get out of my bed. I won't. Not unless you come with me. You get out of my bed or I'll tell Mrs. Topper. What would you tell her? I'll tell her you're in my bed. I... Oh, no, I... Oh, I can't very well tell her that. Not very well. But I can. Oh, but you wouldn't do that. Mrs. Topper wouldn't understand. Are you coming with me or not? I can't. All right, then. I'll give you three to make up your mind and then I'll scream. Oh. One, two... Oh. Oh, no, no, no. Please, please don't. All right, you win. Now, well, what do you want me to do now? Call your chauffeur and tell him to take us to the Carrington. Oh. Gaping at. I wish I knew. Well, come on, get going. Yes, sir.
Where to, Mr. Topper? The Carrington place. Pardon me, boss, but could I sort of inquire what we're going over to the Carrington place for? To look for a body. Better look for one for me, too, because the one I'm using now is no. Come on, Eddie, you want to help me, you know? With what, boss? With the body. The body. Okay, I'll go with you, but kind of keep to one side, because I got a feeling some running's going to be done. Toppy, that's the bedroom I was in, the one with the balcony. How are we going to get in? Through the window. No time for champagne. Oh, but Toppy, it isn't every day a girl gets murdered. Look at me. Oh. Oh, please, please, please. Because this is serious. We've got to call the police. Yes. I want to find out who did this to me. Where's the telephone? Downstairs. All right. to get anybody. Maybe the wires have been cut. I'll trace them. Operator. Operator. Put down that phone. Stay. 
stay where you are. Ah. Your phone's out of order. Who are you? Who, oh, me? I'm, I'm Cosmo Topper. I, I, I'm your next door neighbor. N n nice place you've got here. Very nice. And I, I, I just dropped in to use the phone. At 12.30 in the morning? Oh, it is really as late as that? Well, I must be going. No, I mustn't. Who are you calling? The, the, the police. There, there's been a murder here. Don't look at me like that. I, I didn't kill the girl. What on earth are you people doing? I found this man prowling about the house. But this, this gentleman says there's been a murder. What are you talking about? If you don't believe me, go and see for yourself. It's in that big room at the top of the stairs. Why? Why, that's Anne's room. Go on. Anne! Where is she? Right over there, by the window. Where? Where? There's no one here. I saw it here a few minutes ago with my own eyes. Father, what's the matter? Anne, you're safe. You're all right. Well, of course I am. Oh. Why? Why, Miss Carrington, this gentleman has just been telling us that you'd be murdered. Oh, Mr. Topper. What, whatever gave you that idea? No, it's not you. It's the other girl. I saw her a moment ago. Now, really, I did. Where is Gail? She wasn't downstairs, was she? Of course not. How could she be downstairs when she was murdered up here? Now, Mr. Topper, please control yourself. I think I found something that might explain matters. It's addressed to Miss Carrington. Darling, sorry to run out on you so mysteriously. We'll explain everything when I get back. Love, Gail. Mr. Topper is evidently suffering from hallucinations. Mr. Topper, how old a man are you? Forty-six. Oh, just as I thought. What do you mean, just as you thought? Schizophrenia. Schizophrenia, nothing. I came here in my car. Your car? Uh, uh, yes. It's right outside now, waiting for me. Send him home in my car. And, dear, you'd better go to bed. Good night, Mr. Topper. Good uh, night. Mr. Topper, Gail's disappearance has me worried. Well, look what he's done to me. Oh, where did you last see her? She was sitting on a table in the hall, and she hung my hat on a Chinaman's foot. Just take it easy, Mr. Topper, and Carl will be along in a few minutes. Commercial lady, but somebody owes me twenty-six eighty. Oh, that's right. 
I'm sorry I forgot. You also forgot to say goodbye. It was a cute disappearing act you and your partner pulled. You, you didn't by chance see her. You didn't pass her on the road. No. What is she, sleepwalker? I don't know, but she's gone. Oh, disappeared again. Say, she must have been raised a magician's hat. I'll get your money for you. wrong? I hate to go up those stairs. Would you mind coming with me? Upstairs? With you? Mm-hmm. I'd better come back in the morning. Oh, please, I... won't you come? Say, are you in a jam or something? <laughs> Just nervous, I guess. Nervous? Why? I can't explain, but well, things have been happening and... Well, you can stop worrying, honey. Nothing's going to happen to you. Come on. I'd hate to pay the light bill in a joint like this. Oh, this is my room. Well, if you don't mind, uh, I'll just wait here. on here? Who's that guy in the black coat? What happened to her? Who are you? Uh, I'm the housekeeper. Fine way to keep house. Women screaming, boogeymen jumping out of windows. If I had a house like this, I wouldn't want to keep it. Miss Carrington. Miss Carrington. Miss Carrington. What's going on here? I just said that. Who are you? And don't tell me you're this girl's rich uncle. Oh, don't be silly. I'm her father. Well, that's close enough. Um, um. She's fainted. I'll bet you the first thing she says when she opens her eyes is, where am I? What happened? Say, what are you doing here? All right, so I'll explain it to you. This young lady owes me for a taxi cab ride. I came here to collect it. She asked me up to this room. I heard her scream and walked into the middle of an Orson Welles broadcast. A man was standing over me with a knife. There he is, there. Yeah. Where did you get that knife? Oh, I found another window in the next room. Perhaps Topper's story was right. He said they'd murdered the other girl. Now they've tried to murder Anne. Rama, call the police. Oh, well, now, wait a minute. You don't think I had anything to do with this? Well, do you? Why, certainly not. And uh, you'd better get your clothes on. I'm afraid you're going to remain here, young man. But good heavens, why should anybody want to kill Miss Carrington? Well, they killed me, didn't they? Yes, I can understand that. But Miss Carrington... Oh, don't worry about her anymore. She's got a nice, handsome bodyguard. He's a taxi driver. Maybe he's the one that's doing all the killing. Nonsense. He didn't bring his cab in the house with him. Oh. Well, then, if she's safe, there's no reason for me to stay. Good night. I've had a lovely time. Oh, Toppy, don't run out now. We've got to find out who killed me. Then we'll know who's threatening Anne. Yes, but I don't want my wife threatening me, you see, and she will if she finds out. No, I'm going home. Oh. Madame, I'm quite sure you're mistaken. I'm not mistaken. I know I'm not. I'm Mrs. Tupper, aren't I, Edward? Yes, ma'am, but I don't think that's what the gentleman means. I certainly do know what I mean, don't I? Frankly, madame, I don't know. Well, who does? What do you say we start from the beginning? That's a good idea. Yeah. Where is my husband? But, madame, I don't know. This is a private home. Private? It looks more like a parade ground. Can I help you? You certainly can. Do you live here? Yes, I do. I'm Mrs. Topper. I'm looking for my husband, Mr. Topper. Oh, where's that friend of yours? The one that goes around sitting on people's laps. 
Well, I... She's been murdered, according to your husband. Don't change the subject. If you won't help us, we'll find him ourselves. Come along, Emily. I think we'll find him in the sitting room. The sitting room. Maybe she's still sitting on his lap. Sitting on his lap? Good heavens. You mean you've got a room just for that? Where is it? Uh, right this way. Come along, Emily. Come along. Here she comes. You've got to go. I don't trust you, Bunny. You tried to run out on me. How can I run out with her there? And how can I face her with you here? Well, sounds logical. Okay, here we go. <gasps> Come on, fella. Cosmo! Cosmo! Well, where is he? He was here a few minutes ago. Rama, what happened to him? I don't know, sir. But I'm positive he hasn't left the house. And he won't, not till I find him and give him a piece of my mind. Do you mind? Not at all. Where's the telephone? Right this way. Come along, Emily. Come along, Edward. Cosmo! 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 Operator! Operator, I want to report a missing husband. Edward, you look for him down that way. It's awful dark down there. Darkness never hurt anyone. It ain't the darkness, Miss Topper. It's what's in it. Don't be silly. There's no difference between light and dark, except the lights are out. Run along. I'll go, but every hair in my coat is standing on end. How's my Topper? Well, what's he look like? Like a banker. Of course, that's because he is a banker. Well, can you describe him? Well, he wears a size 15 shirt with a 33 sleeve. A nine-and-a-half sock, Lyle, and he's slightly bald. Oh, yes, there's something else. Let me see, I paid the milkman. That luncheon's been changed from Thursday to Friday. Oh, yes, there's been a murder. Murder? Yes, murder. Capital M-U-R-D-E-R. -E murder. Trying to make these policemen understand something is harder than doing it yourself. <coughs> Mr. Topper! Hey, Eddie, got a cigarette? <laughs> Give me a match. Get out of here. Cosmo? 
I'm from headquarters. What's the trouble here? Trouble, sir? Now, don't stand there dumb. I got a phone call about a half an hour ago that there's been a murder. And maybe you did it. In here, quick! Cosmo! Cosmo! Oh, this must be the kitchen. Well, it's not the music room. Well, he's not here. Cosmo, where on earth can he be? Cosmo! Cosmo! My, it's drafty in here. Look at the chocolate cake. Emily makes some tea. Tea? Mm. Well, of course, to go with our cake. But what about Mr. Topper? Emily, you know he never drinks tea. Well, yes, I know. What? Did you see the face of the man who wore the cloak? No, it, it was covered up. Somebody's covering up a lot of things around here. Well, why don't you let her alone? She's nervous and upset. She is? How do you think I feel? A murder and nobody. Didn't anybody see a body? Didn't you say the topper said he saw the body? Crack a double talk. Who's topper? These men said he saw the body. Where is he? He's gone. He's gone? The body's gone. Say, what are you people trying to do to me? I'm sure, Sergeant, it's nothing but a tempest in a teapot. Miss Carrington had a note from the supposedly dead girl that will clear it all up. Where's the note? It's gone. The note's gone. The top is gone. The body's gone. Now look here. I don't have to come here to be made a fool of. Beg pardon, sir, but I believe Miss Carrington left the note upstairs. Jim, take the boys upstairs. Search everywhere. Don't miss anything. Tear it apart. Now, look here, Rebecca. Quit stalling. Where is this guy, Topper? I don't know. Well, what was he doing here in the first place? I don't know. Say, what do you think I am? I don't know. Who's this fresh guy? Oh, he's all right. He's a taxi driver. Yeah? Well, where's your taxi? Now, don't tell me that's disappeared, too. Where do you think it is? I'm not supposed to think. I'm from the city hall. Now, where was I? I don't know. <laughs> Emily, this cake is simply delicious. Glad you like it. It's the best you've ever made. This is not our cake. Oh, I forgot. Some cream, Emily, please. Cream. Yes, ma'am. nice warm bed to come and sit in someone's icebox. I don't understand it. Oh, but I do understand it, don't I, Emily? I hope so. That screen came from in here. Hey, look. A prowler. Who are you? I'm Mrs. Topper. Who are you? Mrs. Topper? Where's your husband? In the icebox. Has he got the body with him? Certainly, under his overcoat. So you're Topper, huh? Would you mind coming out of cold storage? I will not. Say, what's the matter with him? Is the icebox crazy? He's suffering from hallucinations. Oh. You wouldn't by any chance be thinking you were a lamb chop. Now then, what do you mean by stealing in this house in the middle of the night? And what have you done with that girl you had on your lap? Girl on his lap, huh? Eh? Oh, a love triangle. Oh, do you really think so, officer? I get it. You sneaked into here to see some gal. Your wife followed. You had to get rid of the dame, so you knocked her off. Yes or no? I did not. Where's the body? I don't know. So you admit there is a body? Yes. I came over here to look for it. Well, how did you know it was here? She told me. She? Who's she? The dead girl. Well, now we get... Wait a minute. How can a dead person talk? I don't know, but this one does. Oh, I mean, I know you won't believe what I'm going to tell you, but... Well, we certainly... Where were you when the attempt was made on Miss Carrington's life? In the library, I think. I don't know. Did you or did you not try to stab this young lady? Oh, don't be ridiculous, officer. Cosmo wouldn't stab anybody. <laughs> he can't even carve a turkey. Now, listen, lady. 
Somebody kills a dame who talks after she's dead. And the body gets up and walks away. Somebody tried to whittle on this young lady. And I find him hiding in the icebox. Get up, get up. He likes a little I cool. don't want he gets his wish. You mean you're going to arrest him? Well, these ain't exactly charm bracelets, lady. Oh. He's got a gun. It's mine. Oh, Cosmo, give the man back his gun. <laughs> don't do that. Cosmo! <laughs> Call out somebody. Cosmo, you hurt yourself. Riley, don't you do you might have the sticks for that. Stop it. It might go off. Go to jail? No, but we can't go on like this. My wife's the police. What do you suppose they think? They think you're guilty of housebreaking and murder. Yes. Come on, let's find my body. No, because after we do find it, then I will be accused of murdering. But you. I've got evidence to prove you're innocent. What evidence? This note I was supposed to have written Anne, but didn't. Who did? I'll tell you when we find me. Come on. in the door, dummy. Okay, but I think you're taking a lot of liberties. Oh. Now, wait a minute. I'll take charge of this. Riley, you take the upstairs and you take the downstairs. You take this. Personally, I think someone should call the police. Well, I'll take care of that. Check that for fingerprints. Andy, where have you 
been? Boss, that's something I'll never know. You still looking for a body? Yes. It was down there, but it just left. It left? It just put out the sea. That's the truth, boss, but I ain't going back to prove it. Oh, yes, you are. Yes, sir. My, my, the things I get myself into. Come on. mud pack and drop her right here. The tide will take her out. That's the boss's orders, and don't argue with me. Go below and get that engine started. Okay. Gail, come here, quick. Here you are in here. Oh, dear, I look so uncomfortable. Stop the engine. We've got to get off. No, you lower the boat and, and I'll take care of them. Juice turned off. Give me that. Bob, get out of the way.
Happy. questions to answer. I got a hunch it ain't gonna be no quiz program. Don't take them upstairs. All right. Everybody here? Yes, sir. All here. All right. Now get this and get it straight. Nobody leaves this room unless I say so. And you, stop chewing that gum. Chewing? I ain't even breathing. Not you, her. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss Carrington. I know this is going to be a bit unpleasant for you, but would you mind stepping in the next room with me? Miss Carrington, I'm going to raise this sheet. See if you can identify this young lady. she been living here? She came here tonight with Miss Carrington. Nice looking, Gail. Too bad she had to go so young. She's got awful big feet, though. Who did that? Who did that? Who hit me when I wasn't looking? Was you in that room just now? Not now, then, or ever. Well, don't tell me the joint's haunted. Now, look, I was standing in that room, minded my own business. Just as I say what big feet she's got, I get slapped in the kisser. <laughs> Who did that? Who went out that door? Nobody. Now, wait a minute. Doors just don't open and shut themselves. Yeah, but that one did. Hey, who went out that door? Your hoodie. Who? You feel better, dear? Well, she'd be all right if Charlie Chan had let her alone. Sergeant Roberts, I don't like to interfere, but is it necessary to subject my daughter to all this? She's terribly nervous. Won't you, would you please let her go to her room? Nobody leaves this room. Not even me. And that goes for the both of us. Big feet, huh? I'll match mine with yours any day. Mind if I do. Innocent men stay home nights. They don't hide in ice boxes, and they don't take dead bodies on boat rides. Why did you kill her? I didn't. That's only one man's opinion. I can prove it. How? Leave me alone in that room for a minute. Oh, oh I'm not that dumb. Well, that's only one man's opinion, too. Officer, let him have his way. There are no windows in the trophy room. Any ice boxes? No. All right. I'll give you three minutes. If you're not back in this room with a 14 carat alibi, this lady's going to make one of the most charming widows I've ever met. Oh, well, thank you, officer. Uh -huh. Gail. Gail, where are you? Just getting another bottle, Poppy. Be right with you. And you and I'll have a little drink together. <laughs> Whoops! Catch me! Good 
Boy, Tommy. Don't help me. Now, you stand up and behave yourself. Sweetie, let me mush your hair. Stop it. Will you stop it? This is no time to be playful. Where's that note? What note? The proof you said you had. Poppy, I want to lie down. I'm sleepy. You can't get sleepy now. You got me into this, and you've got to get me out of it. Give me a hand. Oh, dear. Here, come on. Poppy, I feel so silly. Quiet. <laughs> Hold in here. Try to walk straight. Oh, look at the pretty couch. There. Oh. Oh. This feels so good. Toppy, put my feet up. Oh. Gail, this is serious. Where is that note? I know. Try to think what you did with it or I'll be arrested. Put a cold towel on my head, sweetie, and I'll try and think. Well, I do, please. Just try to pull yourself together, will you? as nutty as a candy bar. Send for a straitjacket. Make it two. One for me. Get up. Now, where's that note? Handwriting. They're identical. Mm -hmm. Then she must be in on it. Mm -hmm. Sit down. You admit you wrote that letter, don't you? Yes. And this is the note you found in the murdered girl's room? Yes. Then how do you account for their both being in the same handwriting? Uh, I don't know. Listen, sister. It looks like you're all set for a first-degree murder rap. Of course, if you come clean, we could go a little easier on you. I wasn't alone in this. I wrote the note, but I didn't kill her. Who did? Come on, who did it? It, it was... <laughs> Turn on the lights, quick. Come on, now, who... There's a pickpocket in the joint. Whoever stole that witness, put her back. Jim, search the cellar, search the icebox, search the attic. Where's the attic? Search me. I've been in politics ten years, and I've never seen anything as balled up as this is. Darrell, guard that front door. Don't let anybody in or out. What's down there? That's the kitchen. If I find that dame in the icebox, I'll resign. And I'll drop dead. Oh, come, come now. Brace up, brace up. I'd appreciate it so much if you'd stay here with my daughter. I want to talk to Sergeant Roberts. That'll be a pleasure, sir. Come, come. Now I got... Oh, you a horrible man! I see no reason for us to stay in this awful house while you go around opening and shutting doors. Quiet, please. I will not be quiet. I'm so nervous I could scream. In fact, I think I will. Sounds like my wife.
Carrington! Miss Carrington! Miss Carrington! Miss Carrington! Well, where is she? She was here a second ago. Well, what's happened now? Miss Carrington's disappeared. Well, I left her with him. Say, what is this? The fun house at the beach? Everybody that talks to you disappears. Now I'm talking to you. I suppose I'll turn up missing. That is the best suggestion you've made tonight. Well, that's all right. Don't you ever park near a fire plug. That's for you. Officer, I, I want to go home. I'll tell you when to go, and I'll tell you where to go. Sit down. <laughs> Disappeared. Disappeared? Entirely. Well, we've got to find her. The police won't let me out of their sight. Well, they can't stop me. What? Don't go out there. Mrs. Topper's just outside. I'll fix that. Huh? Well? Where is she? Well, where, 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 where is who, dear? You know perfectly well who I mean. That... That girl. But there wasn't any. Oh, yes, there was. I heard you both in that room. Pardon me, Miss Topper, but it's getting kind of late. Uh, can't we settle this at home? Edward, don't interrupt. Yes, ma'am. Cosmo, I should think after 20 years of married life, you wouldn't try to deceive me. Why, I remember our honeymoon in Atlantic City. You promised me you'd never look at another woman. Mr. Fowler! <laughs> Please, I've had a frightful night. Boss, wait! Don't sit in that chair! Whatever you do, don't sit in that chair! Edward, will you stop interrupting? Well, you're all wet. Is it raining out? Oh, but you haven't been out. Can't be raining in. Well, if it has, it's all cleared up. Yeah, I can't stand much more. Oh, boss, that chair is deceptive, destructible, distrustworthy, and this is the voice of experience. What are you talking about? Boss, you sit in that chair and things happen. Quick! Oh, don't talk nonsense. It ain't nonsense. It's serious. Look, boss. I sat in that chair just like this. Cross my leg just like this. Lean back. Here I go again. Well, that's a silly way to leave the room. Why didn't he use the door? Mr. Tom! Well, as I was saying, I'll always stand by you no matter what happens. Yeah, yeah, just be quiet, will you, please? Well, if that's the way you feel about it, I won't say another word. Idea. We should 
should have one of these in our house for weekend guests. <laughs> really? Clara, for heaven's sake, get out of there. Okay, you take it down this way and you go upstairs. If you find anything, I'll be right here. Boy, what a night. I've never been on such a merry go round in my life! I sure needed that one, right. Toppy. I just saw the murderer in the cellar. Who is he? I don't know. I couldn't see his face, but he was all muffled up in a big black cloak. Well, whoever he is, he was in that room when the housekeeper disappeared. Because I found a contraption in the fireplace that operates the chair she was sitting on. Toppy. What? We've got to make him convict himself. Oh. You sit in that chair and tell them that you know who the murderer is. Me? Mm -hmm. Sitting in that chair? But I'll disappear, too. Oh, no. Not if you keep your eye on the fireplace. And the first one that makes a move toward it, that's the one we're after. Oh, oh. You're not afraid. What makes you think I'm not? I simply want to tell all I know. Well, that shouldn't take very long. Sit down. Now, cut out the stalling. Who killed Gail Richards? Pick him out. In the first place, the one they wanted to kill was Miss Carrington. Well, never mind who they were after. Who done it? The murderer. Didn't know he killed the wrong girl. When he found out, he was panicky and hid the body. You see, Doctor, I did not have hallucinations. Very interesting. So what are you watching that fireplace for? Who do you expect, Santa Claus? Come on, who done it? The housekeeper knew. She knew too much. She wasn't the one. When she was about to confess, she disappeared from this very chair. And the person who caused her disappearance was standing right beside this fireplace when it happened. What do you say, Doc? He's looking right straight at you. The man's mad. I was nowhere near the fireplace when it happened. I was over there. Rama, you were standing here by the fireplace. You're mistaken, Dr. Jerris. I was standing by the library door. Now, wait a minute. Who was standing by the fireplace when the housekeeper disappeared? Why, Father, you were there. Why, yes. Come to think of it, I was. Mr. Carrington, would you mind sitting in that chair? Of course not. mind that. Put your hands up, too. And if you've got any sense, you won't move a muscle. You see? I told you it was him. Sergeant Roberts, it's been a pleasure to do business with a man of your intelligence.
serves you right. Oh, I'd hate to be in your shoes. First murder and now reckless driving. The recording angel will certainly throw the book at you. Say, what are you doing here? Oh, steady, old boy. A big fun. Now, why did you try to kill your daughter? Oh, don't be silly. I'm not Anne's father. Who are you? I'm Walter Harburg, Carrington's partner. Carrington was killed in the mine cave-in. So that's it. Why, you ghost of a double-crossing crook. Anne must know about this. It's too late now. Oh, no. We're stuck here till she finds out. And when she knows the truth, I can go to heaven, and you can go to... Uh, give me a pencil, quick, and a piece of paper. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Take a letter. Dear Anne, I am not your father, period. Well, if he was looking for an accident, he sure found it. This is going to cost him his driver's license, you know that, don't you? Here, Toppy. Give this to Anne. I'm sorry about your father, Miss Carrington. Wait a minute. He wasn't her father. Miss Carrington, this is for you. Well, what's this all about? Oh, here, read it. Or am I expecting too much? Where did you get this note? It flew into my hand. Notes that fly. Fathers that ain't fathers. Leaping chairs. Come on, let's get out of here before the trees start talking. Edward? Edward, where are you? Here I am. And here I go. Edward, come back here. Not me. From now on, I used to be your chauffeur. But you were to drive us home. Not in that car. Enough is enough, and that's what I've had a abundancy of. Very well. If that's the way you feel about it, Emily will drive us. And Cosmo, this time I'll sit on your lap. All right, darling. Emily, do you know how to drive? No, ma'am. <laughs> Isn't it exciting? <laughs> Thanks, Eddie. You've been a great help. Sorry I had to dump you in the water, old boy. Oh. 